Going out for dinner should feel like a huge treat, and very often for me it does. But it works best when I have a number of rules in place. So I know the restaurant I'm going to very well. I know the menu intimately. I have a very clear idea before I get there of what I'm going to order. When I order, the waiter or waitress listens really carefully, and that when the food arrives is exactly what I've ordered. <laughs> The restaurant was really trying to pretend it was actually in the heart of mid-America. There was baseball on the TV, there was a lot of noise from the bar, and the diners who were in there were talking really loudly, probably because they were competing with the baseball and the music and the ice machines. The waiter comes over and he brings a menu and it is huge. There were ostrich steaks, alligator steak, cheesy fries, curly fries, chili fries, onion rings with tequila relish. I asked for a plain steak and chips and he says, would I like the peppercorn sauce? Would I like the tequila sauce? Jack Daniels sauce? Would I like the curly fries? Would I like the chili fries? Would I like the garlic fries? Would I like the cheesy fries? And I said, no, I just want a plain steak with plain chips and a plain salad, please. So the waiter then asked how I'd like the steak cooked, so I thought I'd like it medium rare. The food turned up and my steak was put down. It was stone cold and practically raw. The chef had said he could cook it for longer, but that he didn't think it was a good idea because then it would be well done. So I was feeling really bemused because there was this man standing there telling me that I couldn't have a medium rare steak. It either had to be raw or burnt to a crisp. So my sensory issues kicked in. The music became louder. The voices of the other diners became louder. I could hear the conversations at the table the either side of me. On the right, they were saying, I think he's in year six. On the left, they were saying, we need to pick up some paint tomorrow. Cutlery clattering against plates. I think he's in year six. We need to pick up some paint tomorrow. I could hear ice in glasses. I think he's in year six. Just kind of starts going around my head in the loop. We need to pick up some paint tomorrow. I think he's in year six. Just keeps we need to pick up some going round and round the same sentence again and again. It's like being in the lion enclosure in the zoo. Just wanted the steak cooked the way I liked it. it. Feels like a life or death situation, but I just can't make the decision. The lions are circling, roaring and pacing. When a situation like this happens, I feel kind of prickly on the inside, sort of hot, and as if I'm about to cry. I also feel ridiculous. I'm a grown woman about to throw a tantrum. It all just became too much, and I get this overwhelming feeling that I need to be out of the situation that I'm in. A bit like a missile, I just kind of know where I'm programmed to go and I'm just getting out of there whatever happens to be in my way. Outside the cold air hits my face and I start to feel really embarrassed, I just want to cry. So I kind of open the door and walk back into the restaurant, I kind of slink back to my table sheepishly and I look around at the other diners and I wonder what they must be thinking of me because of course to them it's only a steak, but for me it's never just a steak. With autism being a spectrum disorder, there's many things that may trigger a meltdown. Some of Richard's triggers are patterns and, and you know, funny shapes. 